guys, what's up? Ragdo here, welcoming you back to the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. I finally sat down and had enough time to wrangle up some Fates Collide boosters. We're not going to worry about these reward chests, we're not going to worry about anything. I want to get into the Fates Collide boosters because there's so many good cards in here, and we have to get into them, and we have to see what we can get, and oh, I'm so excited! Alright, here we go guys. Something good, something great. Give me a reason to celebrate. It's so nice to see all of the shiny news come out. And our first rare is... Alright, this is actually a pretty good one. We've got Mew with 50 HP and Memories of Dawn. This Pokemon can use attacks of any of your basic Pokemon in play. You still need the necessary energy to use each attack. And Encounter. Search a deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. So, I mentioned this in my speculation video. But I see two main uses for this Mew. One is to copy Night March and deal as much damage with Night March as possible. Two is to copy the attacks of a Pokemon EX, but only yield one prize card if it gets knocked out. That's what I think the big draw of this Mew is. You can put this Mew on the front lines, you can have it use a very powerful attack, but instead of the two prizes that a Pokemon EX or that a Mega Evolution will give out, Mew will only give out one prize. So I think this is an excellent card. It's a good take on the concept that the original Mew EX had, but I think it's a bit better. Even though it has less HP, it only gives up one prize, so you can't really complain about that. So then here, we have Fennekin racing a Chikorita. If I recall correctly, the Chikorita from the Breakpoint set was actually looking through a portal into a Fennekin city. So to see them finally together and playing, very nifty. Though it appears to be some kind of weird apocalyptic tree city. <laughs> I don't know what they're playing in. Then we've got a Whimsicott. With light steps, move an energy from this Pokemon to one of your benched Pokemon. One fairy type energy does 40 damage, 90 HP. I think this is a little redundant, actually. The idea with fairy energy is that you would normally be using Aromatisse, and Aromatisse can do this before you even attack. So I guess if you want to leave a Pokemon out for your opponent to knock out, I just, I really don't see the utility here. Maybe like an early cheap attacker against most theme decks? I can't wrap my head around that one. Then we have an Altaria Spirit Link. Your turn does not end if the Pokemon this card is attached to becomes Mega Altaria EX. Of course, this is an essential card if you are running Altaria EX and Mega Altaria EX, as you will not lose any momentum by playing with those cards, and the same goes for any kind of Spirit Link and their respective Pokemon that they attach to. Then we have a Chinchino with Sweeping Cure. Heal 90 damage from one of your Pokemon for one energy, that's not bad. And knock away, flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 30 more damage. With a base 90 HP, this is an okay card, it is not a good card, but this fits well into your basic starter deck. It's a good kitchen top counter card to get your collection going. Then, we have a very shiny looking Solosis. He's chilling out with a little Shelter there. Shelter looks like it's shaking and... Oh, wait! The Solosis is tormenting the Shelter by hitting it with rocks and making it go into the shell with its... That's messed up, man. This is very neat seal artwork. Very pretty. Makes you look blue against the night sky. I like that a lot. I think that's very, very neat. This Gothita card is cool, but a bit of an eyesore. There's a whole lot of visual noise in here. Ugh, not a fan. Not a big fan, but it's drawn well, so can't really complain about that. Then we got this cute little Minchina. Oh, he looks so dubby. Oh, I want to rub his belly. Oh, that makes me happy. And then we've got a... Ooh, this is a really cool coughing card. Look at how well it's painted. I, it looks like something I would hang on my wall. It looks very classy. I like that a whole lot. That's very neat. I hope the wheezing is drawn like that. Alright. Now. Next pack. Come on. Something good. Something great. Give me a reason to celebrate. Ooh, two rares this time. Come on. Yes! Yes! Haha! <laughs> good pack. Good pack. Good pack. Good pack. Yes! Awesome. Alright, first of all, let's cover Omastar Break. 
With 140 HP, Omastar Break retains the attack's abilities, weakness, resistance, and retreat cost of its previous evolution. With the ability Dangerous Tentacle, once during your turn before you attack, you may switch one of your Pokemon, one of your opponent's benched Pokemon EX with his or her active Pokemon. This is a really, really, really good way to shuffle your opponent's momentum around. If they're trying to set up a Pokemon EX on the bench, you can bring it right up to the front without having to use your Lysander as a supporter card and knock it out. It's a little situational, and I don't know what the attacks, abilities, and, you know, the, the cost of its retreat, the cost of its attacks, I don't know what all of that is, but based on Omastar's break, Omastar Break's ability alone. Need to slow down a little bit. I'm a little too excited, if you couldn't tell. Based on Omastar Break's ability alone, I think that this finds a place in most decks, considering how prominent Pokemon EX are these days. Now, the card that made me trip over all my words with Omastar Break, Alakazam EX, Full Art. Full Art, Full Art, Full Art, Full Art, Full Art, yes! 160 HP with the ability Kinesis. When you play Mega Alakazam EX to evolve this Pokemon, before it evolves, you may put two damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon and three damage counters on your opponent's benched Pokemon. One of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Very, very, very strong. 30 damage, or three damage counters rather, will knock out a Joltik on the bench. 20 damage on the active Pokemon helps secure KOs. Just in general, free damage for evolving. Never a bad thing. On its own, before you Mega Evolve it, however, Alakazam has Suppression. For one Psychic, one Colorless, put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. Again, incredible. Highly detrimental to the po to the Pokemon... To the Pokemon to the opponent trying to set up Pokemon on the bench. Again, Night March, big victims to this. The Greninja Break deck does rely on Froakie. Knocking out Froakie early with this could be very powerful. This is just a good card. This card makes me happy to have, and I was so excited to open it. I don't normally trip over my words when I record my videos, but seeing this full art Mega Al- not Mega, Alakazam EX certainly put me off. Then we've got an Ultra Ball being reprinted again. Discard two cards from your hand. If you can't discard two cards, you can't play this card. Search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. Ultra Ball has been a meta staple for years. It will continue to be so. Being able to toss some of your cards and go get any Pokemon you want is just too good. Here we have Wormadam with Sand Spray for 30 damage and Twin Bursts. If Motham is on your bench, this attack does 60 more damage. 120 for 3 colorless energy is okay at best, but the real stickler is having to have Motham on the bench, which is situational, and as such, you can't rely on this, so I don't think it's a very good card, but it could start you out in your collection. Then we have a Servine with Serpentine Strangle. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may flip a coin if head your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Obviously not as reliable as Crobat, Golbat, or Mega Alakazam EX, but it certainly could prove to be a severe annoyance. And I'm noticing that they're starting to push this evolution trigger where when you evolve a Pokemon, something happens. And I like it. I think it's very neat. I think it pushes the meta in a way that's less so aggre or more aggressive, but in a less direct way, if that makes any sense. It's very bizarre to see. I've never seen a card game like this before, but I like it a lot. It, it scratches my brain, makes me feel good. Then we've got a Spoink flying way up high. Way too high. Spoink, you better hope that a flying-type Pokemon comes to take you down to Earth, man. You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna break your little crystal ball. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Then we got that Solosis again tormenting that poor shoulder. Got a couple of Deerlin just chilling out in the forest and the flowers. It's so pretty. Ah, uh, Binacle. 
one of my least favorite Pokemon fighting over what appears to be... Never mind, I'm not even going to say it. And we've got Jigglypuff, Spoink, and Snivy going on a little adventure. Oh, that's adorable. I love them. Alright, this entire... The hours that I've been spending trying to get good tournament matches were made worth it by that Alakazam. So let's see if we can't make it a little bit better. Rare one. Ooh, and... <laughs> yes! 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 Delphog's Break. With the ability Flare Witch. Once during your turn before you attack, you may search your deck for a fire type energy card and attach it to one of your Pokemon. Shuffle your deck afterward. Yes, 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 yes. You don't understand. Okay, well, maybe you do. How good this is. But what you don't understand is how much I've wanted this, because I've wanted to run a strong Fire-type deck for a long time, and I've been missing a lot of the cards that typically get run. This will definitely help me. Flare Witch, and by the way, you can have four copies of Delphox Break, so you can get four energy per turn. Now that's some power right there. This has the potential to set up so many Pokemon. I love it so much. I'm so excited to play with it. Just being able to go get that energy from your deck, and then put it onto any one of your Pokemon. So good. That gets you so much momentum. It's so, so powerful. At least I think it will be. Then we have Omastar. Now, take a look at the card art. This is pretty weird. Omastar appears to be lost in an overgrown city. Like it's in the far future instead of the far past. Very bizarre. But anyway, Omastar has 120 HP and Restoring Beam. Now remember, Omastar Break will have this ability as well. Once during your turn before you attack, you may search your deck for a restored Pokemon and put it onto your bench. Okay, so the idea behind this is to get out other restored Pokemon. Maybe even multiple Omastar Break? No, you definitely want to be looking for... There must be like a Kabutops or something. Or maybe not. Maybe you're just looking for more Omastar Breaks. Very interesting. I need to see the rest of the set to make a call on this, but... Spinning Attack, 60 for 1 Water, 1 Colorless. It's not bad. It's not the most efficient, but certainly not the worst either. We have another Whimsicott, and then we have Helix Fossil Omanyte. Look at the bottom 7 cards of your deck. You may reveal an Omanyte you find there and put it onto your bench. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. This is how fossils work nowadays. I remember back, way back when the cards first came out, the fossil was like a, a tool card, and it also acted as a Pokemon. You played on the bench, and then you evolved into Omanyte and Kabuto. Now it works a bit more like this, and you are encouraged to have cards. I think it's Caitlyn that shuffle certain cards of yours to the bottom of your deck so that you can use this to go find them. The fossil cards are pretty weird and I think they're a little slow, but I think there's some real potential there. Then we have Bent Spoon, a Pokemon tool card. Prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to the Pokemon this card is attached to. Existing effects are not removed. So if your opponent has an attack that would also put your Pokemon to sleep, if it would remove one energy from it, if it would send it to the bench. None of that happens, it just takes the damage. So honestly, not the worst tool card I've ever seen. If it gave you a little HP or maybe a little attack damage, I think it would be a meta staple. But as it stands, I think it's a pretty good niche card. I don't really know where it'll fit in, but I think it's okay. And then we got that seal again. Got a very tough looking Meowth. He's hanging out in the mountains. He's been training. Look at this Riolu card, that's so pretty! Oh, that's so well painted. That's very impressive, I like that card a lot. We got that messy Gothita card, and it's painted well too. It's just got so much visual noise in there. And we got that Soren Spoink, you go Spoink. Reach for the sky. Alright, I think this is our last Fates Collide, I hope it's not. I hope there's one more and I'm just being silly. But, we got two more rares again. Something good, something great. Reason to celebrate. Ooh. Uh, oh, oh. Two Lucarios. Huh. Okay. Well, here we have Lucario, 
with Beatdown and Magnum Kick, 40 and 70 respectively, with 110 HP. And then we have a better Lucario <laughs> with 110 HP, and it's a reverse holo, that's why we have two rares. This Lucario has Vacuum Wave. Once Metal Type Energy for 50, this attack's damage isn't affected by weakness or resistance, and fight alone. If you have fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, this attack does 60 more damage for each Pokemon fewer you have in play. So if your opponent has 5 Pokemon on the bench plus their active Pokemon, and you've only got Lucario, this attack does 300 more damage. It's pretty gosh darn amazing, and it only costs a Metal and a Colorless. You can get this set up by turn 2. I think that much like Garchomp currently has a deck revolving around it, this Lucario will run four copies of Riolu, four copies of Lucario, and maybe some support cards like Bronzong and Bronzor just to arrange the energy around. Honestly, this will do so much damage by itself, it's not even funny. I'm very excited to see this in play. I think personally, it's gonna be pretty impactful on the meta, but we have yet to see. I'm just excited to have one. We have another Bent Spoon, and here we have Old Amber Aerodactyl, just like the Helix Fossil Omanite. Look at the bottom 7 cards of your deck, you may reveal an Aerodactyl you find there and put it onto your bench. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. I haven't seen the Aerodactyl card from this set actually, so I wonder what that plays like. Could be pretty good. Then we have Duosion with 60 HP and Double Link. If Solosis is on your bench, this attack does 30 more damage. If Duosion is on your bench, this attack does 60 more damage. Not bad for one Psychic, one Colorless, and it knocks out itself. So if you go against opposing Duosion, this can work out really well. The downside is it it doesn't stack. So you won't get additional damage for each Duosion or each Solosis. It'll just increase in damage if Solosis or Duosion happen to be on your bench. At least I think that's how that works out. Anyway, Middle Child card. You'll probably expect to see Reuniclus more than this. But, then we have another weird Binacle fighting over the you-know-what. We've got the Racing Fennekin and the Chikorita, friends at last. The pretty little seal, having a good time by the water. This is another beautiful Riolu card. Whoever they got to do these, spot on. These are gorgeous looking cards. And then this is a very neat looking Bronzor. I like that a lot. I like the the painted style, but when you look at it at a glance, it looks like it could be from X and Y, actually. That's very neat. Very pretty. Okay. Well, I'm going to save these other little goodies for a separate video because I was so excited. It, it's literally so early in the morning. As I sit down to record this, I just had to get out of the way. So if I'm not, if my voice sounds funny, or if uh, my commentary wasn't up to its usual standards, I do apologize. I was just so excited to get in here and rip into these cards, and boy oh boy, did we get some good stuff. So, if you guys have enjoyed this episode of Opening Booster Packs, then please let me know with a like and a comment down below. And tell me which card we got that you liked the best. Was it one of the break cards? We got Omastar break, we got Delphox break, we got that awesome Lucario card, we got the Full Art Alakazam EX. There's a whole lot to play with with this. So let me know which one you liked the best, and I will see you guys next time when we return to the Pokemon trading card game, hopefully with more boosters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to sleep. And then I'm going to come back and try to get more, so I'll see you guys then. Until next time, be sure to take care and have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye!